class. And I'm excited to teach you about my passion of Sumie today. And, let's see, we need the um, focus. Okay, Sumie is a word that Sumie is ink, dash E, ink painting. Or in Japan, it actually goes by Sui Okuga, which is water ink painting. And I was actually visiting Kyoko, uh, pardon me, um, I'm sorry, I, I forget about it. We're, we're gonna cover the four treasures of this study. And um, traditionally, there's an ink stone. This is a very old ink stone. And you would put a few drops of water on the ink stone and you would grind your ink with your ink stick and you do it in a circular motion until you get enough ink to do your painting, which takes quite a bit of time. And we will be using bottle ink today and I'll show you another variety as well that you can use. But it's nice to know how to do this and if you ever do grind your fresh ink, be sure not to leave the ink stone stick onto the stone because the ink stick is made out of pine suet and glue formed into a nice little form here. And if you leave it like that, it would glue itself on there and chip your stone and your ink stick. So be sure to lay it like this. So if you had quite a bit of ink and water that you mixed up, you would push it down into this little well. And there's a lot of variety of ink stones uh, and ink sticks as well. And um, you'll see all shapes and sizes with a lot of, this is decorative. And some have dragons on them, some have just a rectangle. And some of your students have taken the Sumier class before in the uh, the regular Gakko se session, and we used the ink stones, but we poured liquid ink into them. But I just wanted to show you how that's done. If you ever have one in your home, you'll know how to use those. So that's the ink stick and the ink stone. And uh, the ink is called Sumi, and the ink stone is called a Susuri. And you may have seen those around in your home or somebody that you know. And now we will go to um, paper can be anything that is sturdy, um, heavier weight is good. We've changed our paper at the Gawko session to this nice thicker paper. And traditionally it's what's called mulberry paper or rice paper that's used and you can see how thin it is. And it's very hard, you can actually see through it. It's very hard for beginners to control the moisture on it. So um, this is for later when you get really used to your uh, Sumier painting. This is a nice paper to have. But for now, we can use the heavier weight regular paper of some sort. So <clears throat> we've covered the the sumi and the uh, susuri and the paper. Now the brush. The brush is wonderful. There's so many kinds of brushes. This is just a few that I wanted to show you. And this is a big old mop of a brush. And this is made out of goat hair. Anything that's white is made out of goat hair. And that would be for a really large painting. This is a lovely brush and it's made out of mixed hairs. And this is a wash brush to cover wide areas of, of uh, the paper with, with a, a water wash or a gray wash. Generally you'd use this maybe for a landscape. And there's tiny little brushes or tiny bristles. And they can be made out of 
Well, anything from mouse whiskers to horse hair to sheep to wolf hair, uh, just a variety of animal hair can be used for brushes. And this one, you can actually see, if I back it up here, you can actually see that it's a combination of the goat hair, which is very good for uh, keeping moisture in your brush. And then it's covered on the outside with some other type of hair. And this way, it'll form into a point. And um, this one I actually bought to show, this is a badger hair. And I bought it at the uh, Badger Hair. I bought it at the museum up in San Francisco, Asian Museum. And a badger is in the Weezer, weasel family. They have long claws and they are known for their powerful, powerful digging. And that's, uh, so brushes can be made out of many, many different hairs. I wanna share with you my very favorite, all time, all purpose brush. And if you're interested, take a note of what it is here or maybe a screenshot. And you can call Oriental Art Supply. They're down in Huntington Beach in Southern California. And you can request a free catalog and you'll be on their mailing list and they'll send you uh, beautiful catalogs um, every so often. And There's, using a brush kind of like that, it's not the exact same, but it uh, it kind of, it has the goat hairs in the center and it's like authentic. <laughs> oh, okay, good. So it sounds like you have a good brush already. Well, this brush I highly recommend. It's called H2A or B, B is a little bigger, but either one is fine. Idea from Oriental Art Supply. And um, it'll suit you for anything you want to paint. And it's about $12 because brushes can be very frustrating if they don't come back into a point after you're trying to, um, especially for bamboo, if they don't come to a point, you're very frustrated. So this is uh, OAS's, this is their newsletter from a few years back. And uh, they have all sorts of products. So I really recommend that you call them or go online and request a free catalog and you'll be very happy with their supplies. Okay, and this is uh, a real wide boudé brush, very wide. And as far as cleaning your brush, very important to clean your brush when you finish and just hold it under a stream of uh, lukewarm water until it clears and you'll see it clear if you put it in your hand. And don't ever let ink dry in your brush because it will ruin it. And you see how fluffy this brush is? Oh, and I wanted to point out also, when you get a brand new brush, like this one from Oriental Art Supply, you take the cap off. It's just there to protect the brush when it's being shipped. And you see it's very pointed. And that can tell you what it's gonna look like when it's wet. And you wanna soak that for five, maybe 10 minutes, not too long. You don't wanna get water up in the, in the wood here because it could split and your brush could actually fall out. So just soak it in a very shallow bit of water until it fluffs up. This is the exact same brush and it'll be fluffy and you won't even recognize it. But if this brush is wet, it'll come to a point again. So this is the same brush, but you'll never want to put this cap back on. You'll want to discard it, recycle it, I'll throw it away. And uh, because if you put something on a wet brush, it'll make the brush moldy and the hair will actually 
fall out. I've had that happen. So are there any questions about brushes or how to care for a brush? This is a little haiku I made, Moonlight for the Breeze. Splendid shadows of bamboo dance for my eyes. Do any of you have bamboo growing in your garden? Oh yeah, I have one in my backyard. I have, I have a lot of bamboo. It's just pretty. Wonderful. Yeah, actually my, oh, you can go. It's your favorite, you said? It's just like, um, the bamboo in my garden is just huge. Oh, it's huge, beautiful. It's, it's like one... multiple, multiple, multiple st stems. Beautiful. There's over 1,000 varieties of bamboo. And um, some are called runners and some are called clumpers. And the runners can go underground and the rhizomes can spread and they can be pretty alarming where they wanna go. <clears throat> the, uh, the clumpers, however, just grow a little bit every year around the perimeter of the um, bamboo plant itself. So they're, they're just a beautiful plant to have. And there's also, we talked about the four treasures of this study. There's also what's called the four gentlemen. And that's according to the seasons. And there's um, like plum blossom is the winter. Bamboo is a summer season plant. And the chrysanthemum is a fall season plant. And then there's the um, orchid plant, which I don't have a picture of. So they're just beautiful to learn how to do those four treasures. I mean, the, the four uh, honorable gentlemen are the four paragam, paradigms of the um, Asian painting. And from there, you can paint anything you like. You can go to Knob Hill grocery store and you can buy a crab and tell the man, tell the fish person, don't crack it up yet. I want to take it home and, and paint a crab. So anything can, <clears throat> can be your subject matter. When I told the fish man not to crack it and clean it, that I wanted to take it home and paint it, he turned around and looked at me so strange. And then he laughed, we both laughed. But any subject you can paint. Um, and in the beginning, we have an introductory on Monday and she talked about the different themes that the different grades have. And these are past paintings that you may recognize yourself with. This was, um, for the class, sixth grade class, the theme was uh, tea, tea ceremony. And so they painted a beautiful sommelier of a teapot that I brought, the tea whisk made out of bamboo, and then a hot cup of tea with steam coming out of it. And when you get a dryer brush and go over it, on the white paper, you see this where it skips over. And that's called flying white. Flying white happening here too. That's a beautiful thing to have happen. Does anyone recognize this that they did in one of their, their uh, sixth grade classes? And here's a picture of the first grade class. And Rihanna, are you in the lineup today? This is her painting of a fish, a Sumier painting. Now Sumier is just black ink and its values. So um, it's black ink and then when you dilute it with water, it reduces the intensity of the blackness and you have a lighter gray, lighter gray, lighter gray. So in a way it's considered that Sumier has colors, but they're actually values of black ink. 
and its, its uh, gray values. And here's the person who did, I believe this was uh, third grade, was kites. And does anyone recognize this? Maybe the artist is in the crowd here. So this is um, what the students did in the past. Each grade had a different subject or a different theme that they painted. And I thought this was lovely. There's mountains behind and the kite with a little roller, roller string. So we have all you can paint on, you can paint on wood. This is a picture of a painting that I did for the Chinese New Year this year, Year of the Ox. And this is on a piece of nice wood. You can probably see the grain of wood, but you can do your Sumie painting on wood. What's really cool is you can take a little stone from the garden and you can paint a painting from the garden. And I had the year of the rat somewhere here, but uh, I think the rat has crawled away. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to take you through the way to do paint Sumie bamboo. And once you learn it, you'll enjoy doing it for the rest of your life. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful medium. So I want to show you how to put your ink together and make values. You can have this is a plastic plate. Sometimes they make paper plates that have little divisions in them. Sometimes this is a porcelain plate. And oftentimes you can go into a thrift store and find beautiful things like this to use for your ink. Now, do any of you recognize this? This is a container from something we all love. Egg container. Uh, yes, mochi. Mochi, mochi container. Beautiful. So these, I always say these, these are wonderful, what's called a palette. And I recommend that you put a little indication of where your ink is here. And that way, when you have water added to your ink, they all start looking the same. So this way you'll know that's your blackest black. This is a nice ink to get or this type of ink. Or if you have watercolor today, that's just fine too. This is something you can get locally from Palace Arts or Limbs, and this as well. So you only need a tiny, tiny bit. It goes a long, long ways. So we'll open this up and I'll show you how little we need of this. And I'll put it in the container that has the black black ink. So tiny, just as little as possible. That's plenty, even though it doesn't look like much. It's a plenty. Be sure to cap your lid, keep it from spilling and keep it from drying out. And I also want to show you something that the local art stores sell. And this is called Art Graph. It's a carbon disc and it's wonderful. It's about the size of a tailor's chalk. It's wonderful to paint with because just a few swipes of the brush onto your black carbon disc. And you might wanna write that down. And these are about $11 and they last forever. And they're not like 
the ink stick that we ground earlier on the stone. They're not like this at all. This you have to grind and grind and grind. This becomes liquid ink just with a wet brush. And I'm actually gonna use some of that. And I'll show you how to make different values. Values means that you want to lighten up the ink from the dark ink to the light ink. So a little bit of, and, and a quick, a quick dip in your water container. This is a sugar caddy. If you ever see these, they're awfully nice because you can lay your brush across them like that. So sometimes you see them at Ross department store or sometimes the thrift stores, they're wonderful. Normally they put sugar, packets of sugars in them, but this is a wonderful dish to have. So a quick dip into the water. You don't wanna stay there long because you don't wanna rinse your brush out, but a quick dip and then pull it out as much as you can in another well here. Then a quick dip again, and then pull as much as you can. And a quick dip and pull out as much as you can. Okay, I'm going to put this aside. Now this is a demo that you can either try to go along and do as you see it, or you can just sit back and watch and listen. And then maybe later on, you can tune into the uh, video again if you want to try painting bamboo. And uh, Sumie is a very respected and revered art medium. And it's just a passion of mine. Once you start it, you love it. So we'll put the ink disc aside, but do keep that in mind if you see these at the art store, they're very nice to have. And uh, they're a little less messy than dealing with the liquid ink. So I'm just gonna go over a few strokes and then we'll do a bamboo. And if we have time, we'll do also a dragonfly to fly around our bamboo. So I have my brush pretty well watered out in this, in this uh, little hole that has the least amount of ink. So I, I put my brush in that and then I, I'm gonna put just the tip, just the tip a little ways in to the dark dark. Then, when I hold the brush kind of on its side like this, it has a two-tone effect as lighter and darker. And then you'll find you need to shape your brush often. And the next step for bamboo, and we'll go over this again, is the joint. And with your brush straight up the rest of the way, you'll find that the tip will serve you well this way, straight up and down. The first one we, we angled down a little bit, but now we're straight up and down. We're very vertical to the paper. So here, my tray out of the way, here's the joint. And joints are just basically a curve. And that goes around the bamboo 
And you can do a slight little flick back and a slight little flick forward. And then the side stems, oh, I wanted to show you, let me back up a little bit here. This is an actual stem of a bamboo that I picked off one of my plants this morning. And it's, it's very important to remember bamboo grows alternately. That means the stems come off from the top of the joint out and I'll use this little water brush to show. So the stems come on top of the joint and they go out just a short distance, out a little further, a little further, a little further. And then the side stems also alternate. That means they change sides. So when you have a joint here, they grow here, then you pop over to the other side and join here. And at the very end, they grow off the end. So now you pop over to the other side of the bamboo. And I like to think of the bamboo being considerate to each other and not crowding, because if it came off of both sides and all around, it would be very crowded. But it pops over to the other side and it also has alternating leaf stems here, here, and here. So it's very important to remember not to put a stem here and then come up here and put a stem. So you want to put a stem here and pop over to the other side and put a stem on the alternating side. And then this would be also up there. And this is an actual bamboo stem that I cut this morning. And you can see that the side stems, this particular one has two stems coming out and then it pops over to the other side and it pops out and it starts growing stems. And then up here, it alternates to the other side and it pops out and grows this way. So that way they don't crowd each other. And making a stem network to put your leaves on is very important. Beautiful example. And this is the little joints. You can see the little joints from the side stems and they have kind of a cute little name called they have a cute name called dragon eyes. So this is a joint or a knot. Sometimes they call it a K or a joint. And these smaller side joints from the stems are called dragon eyes. Kind of fun to, to remember that. And if you want to do a screenshot of this, let's see if I can put that. Um, you can, this is the comb. The main part of it is called the comb, the joint. Here's that flying white we talked about. When the brush gets a little drier, flying white. And then this stem is behind the bamboo, but it shows you the alternating stems uh, from one side, it alternates to the other. Pops over and alternates to this side, and then this side. And this is a, a nice example of stem network where you can add the leaves onto. And the smaller, little joints or knots are called dragon eyes. So that's, that's clear. 
And there's a lot of good tutorials on the YouTube channels. Okay, now I've got my brush back into the ink and I'm pulling it into a point. You just kind of pull. Be sure not to pull and roll because that'll tangle up the hairs in the brush. Just pull, give it a little twist and pull. And also the way to hold a brush is two fingers and a thumb. And then these two fingers go behind and you have a wide range of motion when you hold your brush like that. So again, two fingers and a thumb, and then these two fingers behind, and you have, you can go anywhere you want holding it that way. And you never want to hold your brush like a pencil. That's, we'll, we'll call that a, we'll call that a no. <laughs> so this will give you a lot more success if you hold your brush in this manner. So now we're going to do the side stems and you're going to be completely straight up and down, vertical to your paper. Go out a little bit like that. Be sure to leave an empty space because that's where the other side stems are going to be growing out from. So the side stems like that. And then we pop over to the other side, we alternate. And then we pop over to the other side, alternate again. And then um, I think we'll go one more, one more length and pop over to the other side. Okay, now a lot of bamboo, like the one I showed you, it's a very common bamboo. Mind you, there's over a thousand species of bamboo. This is called, uh, this is called um, golden bamboo. And there's two stems that come out from each side. And that's a real common thing, two stems. And look how thoughtful this stem was. This is short. This one's a little longer. So they give each other space and room, which we all like our elbow space and room, don't we? I don't think any of us like to be crowded. So this is very thoughtful how the bamboo grows. So now we're gonna put those dragon eyes in. And that's the little joints that happen in the side stems. So your, your brush is straight up and down, very vertical. And just with the tip of your brush, boom, 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 boom. And you could even say boom, boom, if you want. It's kind of fun. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And sometimes maybe only one, one dragon eye. And you can even put one down here. And if you want to do the two stems, you can do that. One's a little shorter, one's a little longer. We're just going to take it that far. Okay, now we know to put the other stem over here. We don't have much room on that side, but that's fine. Now, the dragon eye, I'm going to go over that again. It's, it's straight up and down, and you're going boom, 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 boom. It's like two little eyes, and you're pulling kind of in. in keep them kind of close together. That's the dragon eyes and that's where 
these little joints. Okay, now the fun part is the leaf. The leaf is so fun. And I will tell you how to do a successful leaf because it's very easy if you forget not to hold the brush straight up and down. And if you hold it like this, trying to do a leaf, I'll show you what happens. This is holding the, the brush the wrong way for a leaf. So you're going along. And then when you come up, it's not pointed because the brush didn't have time to pull together. Now here's what happens if you do a brush with your brush vertical. You go along, pull your brush along a little ways. Then when you decide to pull up, it's like an airplane going down and then pulling it back up off and going into the air again. See the, br the bristles of my pointed brush? They're coming together. So you want to sharp in on that. A very sharp in, not a blunt in. But we're going to use this method for making dragonflies a little later. So keep that in mind. It's not a lost cause. So we're going to do, make sure you keep your brush pulled into a nice point because oftentimes they get splayed out. So the leaves always go on the very end of a bamboo stem. So this is the structure we've created to put our leaves on. So they go on the very end of that stem. So we're gonna go straight up and down. We're going to let your brush flatten out and then keeping it straight up and down vertical to the paper. When you drag it along, those bristles will come back into a point. That's behaving very well. And then you can take your brush and twirl it into your, in your hand. And when there's a curve on the brush like this, it's, it left a curve when I did that leaf. You wanna do the curve pointed to the next leaf. So straight up and down. And here, off the end of the leaf, straight up and down. You can add a leaf here. The side leaf. We're going to make this a little longer. Thank you, Okay, so Thank you. would you like me to go over that once again? Do we have time? Or shall we just do a dragonfly? <laughs> Any suggestions? Any questions? I think we should do a dragonfly. Okay. We want to jump in and do dragonflies. Okay. No, you can see it. So do you remember the leaf that I didn't think was the right kind of leaf for bamboo because it had a, a rounded edge on the edge? And dragonflies have rounded edges. I'll show you real quick.
So Dragonfly, by the way, these are wonderful books to have to do sommier insects. So Dragonfly has a rounded leaf. They have a big head with big side eyes. They have a thorax. And then they have these little, I think they call them abdomen. They come down, they're little seg segments. And some of them have a little hook at the very end. So you can do sommier with any subject you like. So I'm going to do a dragonfly. I'm going to make this into the dragonfly that we started here. So you have your pointed end and basically just lay it down like that. And you're, you don't have to be straight up and down because we don't want a sharp end. And then just pull up. And then so, and you can do those in different values. If your brush has light ink light gray, and then you tip it just in the black black, you'll find you'll get a real interesting looking dragonfly. And you can do this also in watercolor. Okay, now, just very simply, put a big head on here. And you're going to get some big thorax. And then around here, just kind of do a little swoop. Swoop, swoop, swoop. That kind of shows you the segments of the dragonfly. And dragonflies do not have feelers. And then some of them have those little pointed, um, can't think of the name of that. So would you like to do a dragonfly again? I'm going to rinse my brush out. So I'll have a two-tone dragonfly. So my brush is rinsed out and I'm going to dip just the tip of it into this black, black ink. Okay, we'll do another one. Let's do it right here. So it's, it's about putting your brush down like that. Pull up. Put your brush down. Pull up. And see how my in the, my body of the brush had water in it, so this ink is flowing into there. So that's kind of cool. What's happening with the ink flowing into the water of the brush? Does that show? And then I'm going to um, make the head, pull it into a point. And If you want, you can kind of connect them like that if you want. So when you do sommier, you're not trying to get an exact camera view of your subject. You want to pick, you want to get the essence or the energy or the life spirit. So you're not after an exact replica. So you can have a lot of fun doing that. And I just wanted to say also a real fun project is taking your brush. I'm going to get a little more water. And for those of you who love to experiment, 
and I'm going to dip it into the, and I'm going to do this, just a random scribble. Oops, my brush flew out of my hand. Let me retrieve it off the floor. Now, when you look at it and you, and you think, what do I see there? So this way you gotta use your imagination and you can make a creature that no one has ever, ever seen in this world before. So maybe you'll kind of, maybe you'd like to put, um, uh, let's see, let's have donkey ears. And let's have a big, almost like a pig head, doesn't it? And maybe we want to put little paws. And maybe we want to put some dragon spikes. And maybe we want to do a little, a hoof. So it's part dragon, part pig, part donkey, part rabbit. Let's see, what else could we make out of it? So it's just a lot of fun to use your imagination and see what you see in your scribble and make a creature that no one has ever, ever seen before. And maybe let's do a squirrel tail. And So, strange looking creature. I don't think I've ever seen one before, have you? Are there any questions? Oh, one more thing I wanted to cover that's very important. When you do an ink painting, you want to sign it. You want it to be uh, something that your name is on. And I wanna cover chops really quick. Do any of you have a chop at home? So chops are your signature. And oh, I have one. Oh, you do good. Yeah. Wonderful. Did someone bring it to you from uh, travels, or did someone carve it um, for you? So I, I carved it with my father, actually. Yeah, it was really fun. Wonderful. You know, um, you can also take a white eraser. Oh yeah, that's that's how I did it. <laughs> here, here's, here's part of a white eraser, but you when they, when they're new, they're longer like that, and you can easily carve them uh, very carefully. Be really careful with a little razor uh, instrument. Watch your fingers so carefully, but when you put it on a red stamp, like a red stamp, or this is actually paste made for a chop. This, you, you can either have your name on the chop or you can have what's called a same chop. And this one I had made in China when I was visiting there. And this chop, I picked it out because of the bamboo. And I asked the man if he could carve, this is what the chop looks like. And this says, Studio of the Bamboo Forest. So that's a saying chop, something you like a little 
little something that describes where you live. Since I live up in the redwoods up in Scotts Valley and I have lots of redwoods, but I also have lots of bamboo. I love this chop because it's the bamboo forest studio. And this chop was carved at the San Francisco Asian Museum where you can go on a weekend and there's usually a man there that uh, carves chops beautifully. You tell him what you want or you tell him your name and then you come back an hour or two later after you've looked at all the paintings at the museum and he has your chop ready for you. So this chop, I, I ask for, uh, eight painting brings joy. So I came back and he, he wrote water and ink brings joy. So water and ink implies that it's an ink painting. And I just love this. And be sure when you have a chop to mark it and make sure you know what's front and back because you don't want to put a, a chop on your nice painting upside down. So it's a good idea to just put a little something like this goes toward your body or your face. So when this is, um, you also get this wonderful paste cinnabar ink, red ink, when you buy a chop. And so I'm going to put a chop on my creature that no one has ever seen before. And you can basically decide where you want to put it. Just make sure, I'm going to turn it around, make sure that this face is toward me and I'll know it's, it's in the correct orientation to, to, to uh, won't be upside down. So I think I'd like it right here. I hope I, I have to, you have to kind of tap, 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 tap the paste. Or you can get a red ink pad at the art store. Or actually the dollar store sometimes has them. So I'm gonna put it right here and be sure there's something soft underneath it. Like I have a few napkins and I'm going to push really hard and kind of rock it around. And hopefully, ah, it did. So this is um, water ink brings joy. And then you could take it one step further and you could sign your name. These are wonderful brushes. You can get those also at, um, and so that would be how you'd want to finish one of your paintings or simply use a Sharpie pen with red ink. And I believe, yes, that's how the students did their signature when we had this class at, at Gakko at the Buddhist temple in Watsonville. They would simply, I'm sorry, this is upside down. They simply did their Japanese name in the characters with a red Sharpie. And that's fine too. Mm -hmm. This student even put the word chop. <laughs> so it's traditionally done in red. And this student, he did a little design on the outside of his chop and he used the red Sharpie pen. So you, you'll want to sign your artwork if you don't have a chop. You can carve one out of a white eraser and buy a little red uh, ink pad and dab it in that and chop it. Or you can simply do what this child did and did his chop with the red pilot marker. Okay, do we have time for anyone who did a painting to put it up to share, Irene? Sure, we still have time. Great. So anyone who wants to share 
you can unmute yourself and uh, put it up to the screen. We'd love to see what you've done today. Or if you didn't do anything today, that's no problem. You can um, you can watch the video again if you want, or you can just do it on your own and uh, do a sommelier painting. And it's a lot of fun, and you'll get hooked, I'm sure. This so do nice. Oh, fabulous. Can we see it a little longer? Can you see it? I don't know. Yes. Well, and I love how you alternated the stems from one side to the other side of the bamboo. That was so I I'm, I'm really used to bamboo. I have it all over my yard, so. Wonderful. I love how you did that. Thank you. It's a lovely, it's in the grass family. It's a lovely plant. It, it, when, it, when it's windy and rainy out, it just sways so beautifully. Yeah. So you enjoy that. That's wonderful. And what is your name? This is the creature I made. Very good. You're Mariko? Mariko. Does anyone else have a share? Me. Oh, I love your creature. It's supposed to be a dragon. Oh, my goodness. It's a creature no one has ever seen before. It's part Nightwing, Seawing, Rainwing, and Mudwing. And Sandwing. Yeah. So. Fabulous. Be sure to sign your name on it with some kind of a red pen. Okay? <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Does um, anyone else have a painting they'd like to put up? Marcia's got a beautiful, that beautiful one up there. Oh, let's see. Mar Can you see it? No, we don't see it. Oh. There. How about Benjamin? Benjamin's a really good art. <laughs> She's doing really good. Would you do one, Benjamin? <laughs> and Martha, did you have one you wanted to show? How about Tatsuo and Kiyomi? Do you have anything to show? Oh, can you bring it up closer to the screen? Wonderful. And I keep. <laughs> My sister is busy watching off ink. Like, what, commercial. what? Well, I'm sorry, what did you say? My sister is washing off um, ink, so she's not oh. here. Okay. But this mm -hmm. is what she Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I think it's great you all jumped in and, and did the ink painting. How about you, Taru and Benjamin and Jackson? Nice, Marcia. Mariko? And Tatsuya, anything to share? Um, I mean, I already showed you my painting, but that was really fun. So thanks for teaching me how to do it. Well, thank you. And be sure to have fun this summer um, exploring and experimenting and doing your own sommelier subjects of anything you want to do. And there's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube that you can look up and um, get ideas that way or just do a sommelier of your cat or your dog or your uh, outside, go outside and do some flowers or anything at all that your subjects that you might be interested in. So be sure to have fun and explore and anything goes. Be sure to sign your name in red though. We yeah. want to know who it's by. Yeah. Okay, is that about it? We've been a, a whole hour doing this. That went by so fun. I had fun. I hope you did too. <laughs> all right. Thank but, you for but, today. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Thank you, okay. everyone, for joining Carolyn today. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.